Okay, boys and girls, we're going to be reading a story today. And with that story, we'll be using what we read to make predictions about what will happen next in the text. And the story we're going to be reading is called Catch That Ball. And it's going to be a story about a girl who's really proud of what she does. But then something might happen at the end of the story. I'm going to leave that a little bit of a surprise for you. Okay. And now, today, my students were uh, meeting in a small guided reading group to focus on uh, making predictions for the, the reading focus, but we were using the skill of um, traffic signals in order for them to self-assess where they were with their readings. Text. We're going to be using our traffic signals. We've been using these now for a while. And let's review real quick before we get started. Mm -hmm. If we have green up, what's that? What are you telling me about yourself? Riley? You're good. You you're don't need help. Good. You're good. You're working hard. You have no problems right now. Okay? You understand everything you're reading. But what if I look over and I see you have the yellow up? What's that telling me about you? Lisiana? You have a question? You have a question. And what else, though? You have a question? Need a little help? The question, Emmy? But you're good. Okay, you're still good, you just have a question. So you're still working, but you have a little question for me. Now what if I look over and I see this red traffic signal up? Alex? I need your help. I need help, okay? That's telling me you can't go any further, you need help, okay? And I put a little poster back here for us so we can always remember what those mean. So we'll start everyone out on green. Using the traffic signals is a great way for them to show me where they are with their learning. Uh, they're able to uh, self-assess and be able to uh, determine if they're on the right track or if they need some help. And it's also able for me to manage the group a lot easier, uh, especially in a small group setting. That way uh, it's a visual cue for me, whereas a lot of times if the students are sitting there with their hands up, uh, they stop working altogether. And the um, and mine on uh, the yellow traffic signal is where you know, they can continue to work and they don't have to stop completely. All right, excellent. Emmy, you're up. One second. Feliciano, what do you have? Do you predict what will happen? Yes, you can go ahead. Good question. Go ahead and make a prediction. Answer that question. Make a prediction. And then you can go on with your reading. Okay? Excellent question. Hannah? Let me go after this. All right. You can go ahead and flip the page. And then continue on. A couple questions for you. And then your writing response. Okay? Great. Uh, in order to prepare them to use traffic signals, uh, at first I did a lot of modeling with different passages of reading uh, and acted like they, I was a student myself and came to different vocabulary words that they might not be familiar with and uh, when I Anna. modeled that I didn't know the word I would put the yellow like card up and paragraph. continue yeah, reading so I because I didn't want to stop just Let's because of one front. word. And you have a question? You still have your yellow up. Did you have a question? What does timid and determined Oh, mean? excellent. Now were you stopped right there? Did that question stop you? Okay, that would have been a good time to put the red up okay, for me because that would have showed that you were stopped and you couldn't work anymore. All right. In the past, yeah, they would be stopping, so that means their learning is stopping. Uh, they're not focused anymore. Their attention might go off to something else. Um, so this is just a way for them to constantly uh, be working until they do put that red one up. And then I also modeled when I got to a point where I just didn't comprehend what was in the text. I use the red traffic signal for them to show that there is a time where you do need to stop uh, and you know ask for assistance. And had spent several hours working on her masterpiece. She wanted to create the best thing as well. All right, excellent, Emmy. Yeah. Good job. That sounded great. Oh, Brady, you have read up. Where are you stopped that? Where do you need help? On number three, right there. Which part of number three do you need help with? This is great uh, as a visual in the classroom for whole group because sometimes it's hard to, to identify a student that's not working. They might be sitting there and they look like they're actively engaged, uh, but they're not. So by them putting that signal up, it's a great way for me to get to a student quickly. I've also used it in you know, different subjects, not just reading. I've used it in math as well, small group and whole group. Um, I've even taken them to the computer lab on times well to where they can put them on their computers and, their and if they have a problem or an issue, like they can right? put the different uh, colors up in the computer lab. Um, so this is not something to just throw out to the kids 
and say, you know, go ahead and use this. Uh, they need to see it in action, and that's why I, you know, started yeah. off with modeling it first. And um, if you just give it to them, a lot of times they'll overuse them. For new teachers that would be trying this, I would start in small group, maybe model it whole group, but when you start using them, using them in small group is a lot easier just for the management, for you to manage them. Sometimes in whole group it becomes very tedious to get around the classroom to all the different students. So I would start uh, modeling whole group, but then when you're actually letting the students use it, go into small group first.